Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Toyota Land Cruiser. Wanted to do a video on why you shouldn't buy an 80 series. And as much as it's sought after and desired, there are a lot of problems with the Toyota Land Cruiser that people don't really talk about. I feel like it's very much in the same place of where you have the Instagram reality which looks like rosies and daisies and then you have a real world reality and so we'll go into that my thoughts are with having owned a lane cruiser for about uh six seven years now and owning a 30 year old vehicle so here we go Alrighty, so like i said i've owned this vehicle now for about six to seven years and have had a lot of experience with it um, one of those things are being able to take it to the best places where no car would um, or most cars wouldn't be able to make it and on top of that be able to do it on a vehicle that I didn't mind really messing up so you kind of see the paint it's very faded 30 years I think it was re repainted at some point and still somewhat looks decent but you can kind of see all the marks that are on the vehicle um with all that to say this car has aged a lot since i first bought it and um even more so in the past years that i've owned it just because i've taken it off road ridiculously uh, uh, a ridiculous amount of times in the harshest conditions um, I'm no not any rock crawler and I don't claim to be but with a third year old vehicle you're doing miles and miles of off-road it's gonna take its abuse therefore causing issues or maintenance um, coming up sooner than expected and I'm making this video now because I'm kind of in a point where I love my Land Cruiser but at the same time it is costing me a lot more than I originally expected and here's why so given my current situation with the car I currently have a gas leak I believe I have a cracked tank and it's because of my charcoal canister as I mentioned on my previous video I came back from 2,000 miles of a road trip with my family took it out to Moab and had no issues then I had a slight leak on my LSPV um, brake proportioning valve but that's found in there but that was pretty much it um, otherwise everything else was kind of beautiful it ran great and it had no issues nor did I ever feel like it was gonna let me down um, even in the trial process of long passes testing out the cooling system ever since I've owned this car I haven't had it taken into a mechanic outside of installing my steering components like my tie rod ends and so this was a true test of my ability to work and maintain a vehicle and it passed and great um that was amazing that was amazing that this car took me 2,000 miles with probably close to 250 miles of that being off-road being harsh terrain um and trying to make sunrises and sunsets for my brother so that um we are going much faster on trails as desired uh, or, or not as desired on this vehicle, especially with it being a straight axle, but also being an older vehicle with rubber components, kind of degrading, right? And that's the thing you got to keep in mind with buying a vehicle like this is rubber components end up failing. Um, so what that means is you have your cooling system, which is pretty much what keeps the car running in optimum pressure or optimum op optimum temperature. You have your oil, uh, oil rubber components, which keeps your oil pressure optimum. And then you have your fuel components that send fuel, send gas into the combustion chamber. And so I've done all the, all the um, all the components for all the rubber components for the cooling system 
and I've done most of the oil components like your front crank seal, your oil pump seal, um, your distributor o-ring, all those things I've pretty much kind of done, valve cover gasket, and now what's kind of come up being a 30 year old vehicle is my fuel system. And so now I have a leak and I believe that's the, co the cause of that is from my charcoal canister. I started hearing the hissing noise on the fuel cap when I would open it, kind of just disregarded it and now facing the consequences of possibly a cracked gas tank. Um, and so be aware of that if you own the, this, the, an 80 series is once you start hearing that thing hiss, check your charcoal canister because it is avoidable. I haven't checked it all the way, um, but it has hissed a lot since these past couple weeks and I should have been much more aware of that and started smelling the gas fumes um, on my trip. Uh, becoming more and more just known over time and over the time the use of those miles that I put on the truck it just became more apparent now with all that to say definitely could have avoided that avoided having to replace my tank by replacing the charcoal canister so totally my fault but with all that to say you don't have these similar problems with newer vehicles um, at least most newer vehicles like Toyotas and I had a 2014 Tacoma and that thing was pretty much golden because of the age because of the mileage I wouldn't really worry about any of those issues and even if I put it in about the same amount of terrain or, or abuse um, because those components are a lot newer um, old, still an older vehicle but they are newer and this is kind of where I come to grasp of, is it worth it? Is it worth to own a Toyota Land Cruiser like this? Um, and this video is about why you shouldn't buy one. And you shouldn't buy one is because components go bad, right? So um, I'm sure some of that leaking is definitely my, um, for my abuse, as I mentioned. But you can also see here, in your radius arms, you have bushings, and those are bad. The ones I have on my truck are bad. And on top of that, you can see here, I have new brake calipers, but I also replaced the brake caliper lines. In the front, I have yet to do the rear, and the rear are bad. And I inspected them before going on my trip. They're not absolutely dry rotted just yet but it's coming to that point and this is kind of what i mean by owning an older vehicle that's 30 years old is you have things that kind of come up um that you wouldn't expect and let me show you another example so when one your interior also degrades by the way um that's why i got a new seat sorry kind of got a ton of stuff in here um, I got the Corbo seats I had a cracking uh, steering cover and just parts to great um, everybody knows how flimsy these are ended up replacing those thank god they were only 10 bucks and outside of that my interior is not too terrible I have everything off right now so I could do the I could drop the tank and replace that um, but outside of that, you also have components in here that go bad, like the intake hose, all your heater hoses, um, radiator goes bad eventually, right? Even if you have the three, the three row brass OEM charcoal canister, you'd see here, my hoses are dry rotting and so also my uh brake booster hose which not really the hardest thing to do right um these hoses i've already replaced 
not necessarily saying that these things are hard to do, but they, it does take up time. Um, you see here, I replaced the power steering. I think I mentioned that. Crank seal. Um, even replaced my uh, front crank pulley. And so all these things um, come with an older vehicle. And so if you have the time or the resources or the money to actually work on it or pay someone to do it, then absolutely it's worth it. But you also have to come to realize if you're gonna do all the work yourself to try to save some money, to factor out those costs, right? And luckily I know how to do it, but it's also taken up a lot of my time. I remember doing the crank seal and that was kind of a pain because it was a lot of downtime for this truck and having to get all the parts, it's becoming more and more difficult to find. And so keeping this thing maintained is, one, it's getting a little more expensive, the more that parts are harder to find. So, um, so yeah, like they don't make the charcoal canister for this anymore. So you have to get an AC Delco part. The gas tank, luckily I was able to find um, a brand new gas tank. I just ordered it. And so all these things kind of come into consideration when considering a truck this old. Um, with all that to say, I spent about $2,000 for a brand new tank, which cost me about a thousand. And then um, all the fuel stuff that is rubber, rubber related with new banjo bolts, uh, banjo washers, um, a brand new fuel pump. I figured while I was in there, I might as well just replace my fuel pump um, just because, you know, it's 30 years old. I'm assuming it's going to fail at some point. And so it's, it's kind of like knowing those things about this car. It's small, but these things add up. All the vacuum lines for my VSV that I'm also doing, um, those things you have to keep in mind over and over again, right? When you replace something doesn't mean it's done. There are other older components in this vehicle that need to be replaced. And it's kind of like dominoes. And so that's why I think, yeah, it wouldn't be worth it to spend money on this car. The littlest thing, littlest of things fail. And once that component fails, another component fails. Or because of that component failing, you might as well replace that component, etc. Hence why I'm doing the fuel pump on this car, although I don't necessarily need to. It's about 380 bucks. I was like, you know what? At least I'll get it done. I won't have as much time wasted. Therefore, I'm saving money in the long run because I dropped the tank once and then that's it. You know, I put it back. I don't have to think about, oh, that 30-year-old uh, pump is still running from the same car. So, yeah, things to note uh, when buying a car or considering an older car like this. This isn't, I also own a 1990 Toyota Camry. This isn't a 90 Toyota Camry. This car is well over-engineered for its life. It's not like you're dealing with less components on a front-wheel drive Toyota Camry. You're dealing with a very high and complex four-wheel drive vehicle that's literally made to cross the country. So know those things. All your components underneath, I mean, it's just exponentially more. Yeah. It's, you can't really compare this to a Ford Mustang, which is rear wheel drive, and that's it. You have a transfer case, you have differentials front and rear, you have actuators if you have lockers. Um, it's just so much more. You have two, you have, uh, two drive shafts. There's just so much more in this vehicle than your typical project vehicle. And on top of that, which is a good, a pro and a con about owning an 80 series is you're able to utilize that for your benefit. You're able to utilize all of the truck to get to places where you've always wanted to be. And so is it worth it for you? I don't know, but considering buying these things, that is what you have to keep in mind. If 
you don't have the resources nor do you have the time then absolutely it's not worth it but having taken it to moab 2000 miles with it having no issues and issues arising later it helped me reconsider and had me thinking is this is this truck worth investing into because at this point i bought it for $3600 I've, I've replaced so many of these things and now the fuel tank and the fuel components are going bad on me and so okay let's let's reconsider at this point for how much i got it and all the money i've put in it and all the adventures it's worth it for me but for you it may not be maybe it is buying a new jeep a new forerunner a new tacoma maybe retro isn't for you um i just don't want people to think that getting a vehicle like this as Instagram worthy as it is, it's not as glorious or glamorous as it looks. It's a slower engine. It's got 30 old rubber components that need to be replaced everywhere in the truck. Body mounts. I mean, just looking at it, you replace your suspension. Oh, great. It looks great, right? And then you look at your body mounts. It's all cracking. You know, so it's like these old vehicles come with a price, especially when you're beating it up off road. So just keep in mind those things. And I hope this is something that kind of either reassures you of your decision of why you should get one or why you shouldn't. Um, because it's not just engine components. It's not just a gas tank. It's not just your fuel lines. It's also your interior. I remember this part coming off of my truck all the rattles that's going on um all the interior components you know that are degrading in this thing the steering wheel the cracked dash and i mentioned that before it's just so many things are happening that are so old and moving and because of the abuse it's not just getting road use like your typical 66 project mustang it's everything else and then on top of that look how many miles you're putting on the vehicle and so you got miles you got type of usage and then you got um just old age just three of those things mixed up it's a lot for this car and yeah those are those are the very things that you need to think about considering the vehicle you don't get, you know, I just took off my cover here from my shift boot. Um, and I think it looks way better than the old crappy one. But like, I don't think I could get a factory one unless it's way too expensive. Um, or getting a used one. I got to replace the steering wheel. Um, at least the leather here. So it's knowing those things. And hey, if you like to tinker... If you have the time, you have the resources, then great. If not, honestly, I'd stay away from it because these can be a living nightmare and people say they're so reliable and bulletproof. They are if you have those things correct, if you have your maintenance up to date, if you have things running well, absolutely, it's gonna last you another 30 years. The fact that that fuel pump under here actually it's somewhere here um <laughs> see my fire extinguisher um th the fact that that fuel pump has lasted 30 years is insane i mean many cars go 50,000 miles 100,000 miles and it already has a failed pump this one doesn't nothing i had to do with the injectors thinking about that injectors have o-rings those eventually will go bad and so it just comes to a point that the vehicle is old enough, it's shaken up enough, and parts are going bad. So consider those things before you buy one. And if you are ready to take on the project, there's no better vehicle, in my opinion, that I've had. I've had S2000s, Acura RSX Type S's. I've had a Jeep. I've had a Tacoma. There's no better vehicle, in my opinion, that's a project car that's still modern enough to do amazing off-roading and undoubtedly one of the top vehicles 
to go and explore and still have somewhat of a modern enough engine that's slow that can still that has still has the capabilities of a modern car and the and the feeling feeling of a modern car is the 80 i mean i just it just can't be beat uh, there's a lot of great i'm not saying that knocking on any older vehicles i'm just saying for what you're getting and what type of use you want this is a great vehicle to invest your money in and that's why i'm choosing to 2000 yeah sucks eating up all that money to place replace all the fuel lines um or ma majority of the fuel lines all the components there my charcoal canister dropping the tank replacing the tank it's gonna be worth it for me so up to you hope that was helpful um sorry that i'm kind of just filming in front of me um hopefully you're able to take some input and take it with a lot, grain of salt shoot if you want to buy one just buy one and you'll see you'll understand what i mean phh hose everybody knows how dreadful that is to replace it's like one of those things it's a ticking time bob it's gonna it's gonna break eventually so when you do get the chance to do it do all the hoses right um so it's an example but with all that to say do what you want hope this video was helpful and that you were able to get some great input regarding my background of owning a toyota land cruiser